there was already an established star there in JJ. Um, how did how did they sort of work out uh, how they were going to do things in the backcourt and in they have become a, a great tandem. So I, I wondered how that developed. Yeah, um, kind of naturally, honestly, and a little organically. Um, you know, I wasn't quite sure. I know Jordan was super excited to play with JJ and, and the talented kid that she was. And then we later found out that JJ had looked up Jordan and watched some of her film and her stats and was equal, equally as excited to play with Jordan. Now, I didn't know exactly how the pairing early on would go. Um, both can handle the ball, both can lead the team. Um, JJ being a, a, a big time scorer, I thought Jordan could take some of the ball handling load off of JJ. And so we kind of decided to move JJ a little more off the ball, at least for most of the game. Um, you know, when it gets late, we can kind of mix and match and play off of both of them. But, um, you know, their ability to, to defend and, and on the ball, they're ball hawks defensively. They both love to do that. Um, yeah, and, and super talented in their own right offensively. So it's really been a great fit. I, I mean, they're smaller. I didn't know if we could get away with two smaller guards like that at this level. Um, but no, Jordan really picked up where she left off a year ago at SFA and has just been a fantastic addition. And, and JJ was already elite, but I'm glad we've been able to allow her to kind of take off and shine. Kyle Huseman, Hawkeye Report. Um, haven't been able to watch a lot of you guys this season, but you guys seem like an aggressive team defensively, both half court and full court. Just how would you guys describe the way that you guys like to play defense, and how do you think that'll, that'll match up against a team like Iowa? Yeah, I mean, yeah, we've been aggressive by nature, and, and steals and turnovers has been our MO for most of the year, and probably even led the country for the vast majority of the year in both of those categories. Um, you know, and, and so, yeah, we just, we, I think we're really good defensively. We just do it differently than a lot of people. Um, you know, and a lot of people, I think, when you press, they think you play fast and just go score points, and that's not really what we do. Like you saw last night, we can grind out games if we need to. If we need to play a little bit faster, I think we have the capability to do that. So you get in Iowa. We played Oklahoma earlier in the year, who would be a, a somewhat similar to Iowa and how, you know, how fast they play and the pace in which they play and how elite they are on the offensive end. So, you know, yeah, we're aggressive by nature, but, you know, we're not the biggest team either. We don't have a ton of size, so we have to kind of make up for it in some of their areas, and, and that's kind of been our strength. Go ahead sure. and bet. Okay. Joe Mercado, Western New Metro News. Mark, you and your staff are the only staff, first year staff, to get a team to the second round this year. What are the unique challenges with coming into a program first year and kind of melding together a roster that's about half and half, newcomers and returners? Yeah, no, that, yeah, that's a, that's a good one. Um, didn't know that. Um, but yeah, super excited about where we are. It has come together probably quicker than most people, I, I guess, would have thought. I don't know about in our locker room. I think we we thought we had a chance to be pretty good and to be pretty good early. Um, we, we set goals that we wanted to be in the postseason. We wanted to advance in the postseason. Um, I said that in the press conference on whatever that was, April 5th or 6th a year ago. Um, and, and here we are advancing and in the tournament and, and, and you know played in a fantastic lead that prepares you for opportunities like we got last night and then we'll have tomorrow. So hoop in that locker room that really is just tight knit. Um, we had six returners, seven new ones, and so it was really a battle of who would kind of, how could we blend this, um, and how quickly could we blend it? And really, by the end of the summer, that thing was blended, and that team was clicking um, from a locker room perspective. Uh, Tanner Mounts, U92 Radio. Coach, you know, now that you've had the night to kind of recuperate and start to prepare for Iowa, what are some things that you've seen from them outside of the obvious that maybe you know, the whole national media sees that they do well, or maybe some things that you could take advantage of as well? <laughs> yeah, well, um, well, what the national media and everybody sees is what they do really, really well. Um, it's the the most elite offense, um, you know, in the country. The the best offense I've seen since I've I've been coaching, and um, you know, and, and they're special because they have obviously the, our game's greatest scorer, you know, man or woman leading the charge, and then they have put the right pieces around her, um, you know, and, and I think Stolke's playing really, really well. Uh, I think Kate Martin is phenomenal, like, and I'm saying glue as in the greatest compliment I could give her because I think she just does everything for that team. Um, and, and the other kids, Gabby knows her role. Those kids know what they know what they're doing. They're veteran. They have been here. Um, Coach has done a phenomenal job for many, many years here. So it's a well-oiled machine. And so I think for us, we somehow have to try to get them to leak some oil, I guess, in some some way and, and find a few things that um, you know we can take advantage of. Um, you know, we probably need him to have a little bit of a bad shooting night and, and not shoot it so well and, and slow him down at times. Um, but yeah, no, this is this is elite as lead as, of an offensive group that I've ever seen. 
Uh, Luke Blaine, Daily Athenaeum. So everybody knows about Caitlin Clark, the scorer. But, you know, she was two rebounds away yesterday from having a triple-double. So how do you go about preparing for somebody who just all around makes an impact on the game? Yeah, I think it's probably her assist that, you know, more than the rebounds um, that scare you. If they were offensive rebounds, that would be one thing. Um, you know, defensive rebounds for her can certainly lead them in transition. But I think, you know, when you're talking about an elite scorer that's averaging 30 plus, but nine plus assists as well, that's so many more additional points that she's creating for her team. And so that's kind of the pick your poison, I guess, if you can find a way to do that is do you try to make her a scorer? Or do you try to make her a facilitator? You know, what's the game plan going to be? And so we'll, we'll We'll continue today and tonight and into tomorrow to try to figure out the best way to to somewhat slow her down. But that's about all you're going to. I mean, she's going to get points. She's going to get shots. We know that. Um, just we need to make it as hard as possible um, on her and their team. Yeah, Coach Mike Vogel from ESPN.com. I'm, I'm sure you talked about that a lot this year, but it's somewhat rare that a team has a first year coach two years in a row the way West Virginia did. How did you sort of, I guess, get everybody in line with, hey, I know there's been a, a lot of change around here, but you know, I'm, I'm here to stay and this is what I'm doing. And just sort of, I guess, win, win the trust of the players in that way. Yeah, no, that's not an ideal situation at all, right? To come in and, and be the third coach in three years. Um, and, and I've actually done that one, uh, one other time in my career when I took over. So I had a little bit of experience, um, but honestly it was, West Virginia was a really, really good fit for me, first off, for Coach Kellogg, the way we play, you know, the, the hard work, the blue collar, coal mining community, so passionate about, you know, their, their mountaineers, um, you know, just across the whole entire state. And so it really fit us, it fit my family. And then from the player's side, so Mike Carey was the coach, right? Longtime coach, so much toughness, defense, pressure. Um, and then Don Plitza White took over and that's motion offense and half court man. And so I kind of came in and combined a little bit of both of those identities. So it kind of meshed a little bit. Um, we could get out those kids that were recruited by Mike Carey wanted to get out and defend JJ. JJ Quinterly has set out to be the all time steals leader at West Virginia. Like that's the one goal she gave me when I got here. That was it. That was the random number that, sh that she wanted. And Jayla Hemingway and those kids that have been here wanted to play that way. And then Don added some motion offensive kids, which, you know, we tried to kind of start that way too and run some motion. And, and maybe we've gone a little bit away from that as the year's gone on. But it just kind of blended um, from the on the court play. Um, I've always played the same way with the press and mixing defenses. So that wasn't new for me. Um, didn't know if our team would pick this up quite as quickly as it did, but it just fit. Um, and it really fit early. And then they've just kind of taken off with it. Aaron Parker, U92 Radio. Speaking further on that, when you were still at SFA, um, when Rim Baker offered you to the job, did you see players like Jayla, Kaya, and JJ potentially returning and think, wow, they can really fit into my system? Is this you know, maybe a match made in heaven? Is that what you were going through when you were still in Texas? Yeah, and I had watched film on him through that process. And while you're interviewing, you're trying to study and see what you're walking into. And, and certainly I knew those kids fit really well with what we did, um, you know, thought I kind of, I thought they would come back, but you never know until you get there and we get to know each other and, and they see the vision or at least can, can have an idea of what that vision looks like once I, I painted the picture for them. But no, they were pretty much all bought in. That group really wanted to stay together, wanted to do something, you know, like they're doing, do something special, um, you know, and so proud that they're getting rewarded, you know, because they did choose to stay. And this day and age, a lot of them don't make that choice. And so really proud that that group chose to stay and be Mountaineers. Kyle. Kyle Huseman, Hawkeye Report. One to, to follow up on my first question. I was a team that's first in the country in assists per game and third in the country in assist to turnover ratio. How do you kind of balance uh, your guys' aggressiveness on defense and not be overly aggressive because you're facing a team that, that can really spread the ball around and a lot of really good passers? Yeah, no, that, that will be the challenge. Um, without giving too much away, I guess. Um, that, that's, you got to try to slow them down. And slowing them down means slowing the ball down. And that's, I think, what you're alluding to is how quickly they move the ball. So your defense moves as the ball moves, of course. And so if we can slow the ball down a little bit, that gives us an advantage. Um, you know, I think we've got some speed and quickness that can certainly help do that. Um, but yeah, you've got to slow the ball down. You've got to slow their ball movement down. Um, otherwise, yeah, they can just start to pick you apart. And you know, when they get going and they get clicking, it's, it's, it's pretty fun to watch. Not to prepare for, but fun to watch. Question in the back. Yep, Andrew Crudy, MSN. You talk about a team that has had three of its five starters, three coaches in five years. In Jayla's case, four and five. 
Um, and you've said at points this season that this team gets along so well, you're enjoying the season. What makes them blend so well? Is it a sense of humor? Is it shared purpose, knowing that it's sort of about the whole instead of just the individual? Yeah, well, yeah, good question, Andrew. I think it's a little bit of all of that, um, to be honest. It is uh, it is a close-knit group. Um, egos have been pretty much set aside, I'm not really concerned with, with who's scoring the points or getting the assists. It's a um, very unselfish group. Um, yeah, they just genuinely enjoy each other. We don't have really any big, huge, strong personalities either, so I think that's where you kind of get that even keel nature. Um, you know, it's probably relaxed me a little bit, which is why I said I've had so much fun this year. Um, because there's just, you know, we've just been able to kind of flatline. And, and I mean that every day we go to work. I've kind of joked early in the year I was fighting them because our practices were boring. We had no energy. I'm like trying to get them going and they're not meeting me there. And so it was more like, Coach, relax, like we got you. Um, it just wasn't who they were. Same thing in games. We'd get in a timeout and maybe they're on a run and I'm trying to get them going, telling them it's not good enough. And it was just always like giving me that look. So it's just relaxed me, allowed me to kind of just sit back to and enjoy it and trust them a little bit. And so I think there's this mutual trust. Again, that's something that's hard to gain quickly um, today um, with kids and, you know, coaches. And sometimes it takes a little while. Um, but I think we got that. We got past that pretty quick. Susan. Susan Harmon, HawkFanatic.com. Um, Kylie really sort of intrigues me. Um, can you, what is her position? And she told me that she's really played different positions under all the different coaches she's had. How do you sort of visualize her? What, what do you use her for? Yeah, I guess if you wanted to define a position, she doesn't really play the one that we would probably should or should define her as. Um, you know, but we just, that was the option that we had. That was the best option that we had when we started the year. Um, you know, we've started the same lineup every game the entire season, which is just unheard of, um, I think, too, um, for the most part. But Ky Kylie is a forward that we just play, you know, that we play, like, I guess, as a five, if you want to put a position on it. But that's not really what she is. So she guards the other team's five. But, you know, offensively, that's not the way she plays. She's more of a forward that faces up, can shoot it put it on the floor a little bit. Um, but she's she's gotten a lot more confident in the last probably three to four weeks. I was happy for her last night to have, you know, to get to double figures and hit a three, put it on the floor. You know, she can run. I mean, she's a runner. Like, I have, a, like, she was getting shin splints in the fall. She trails in Morgantown, and she'd take her dog and go running after practice several miles, and we'd have to tell her to just, like, you can't. Like, you can't do that. Your body's, you know, going to break down. But that's the kind of work ethic that she has. I see her in the gym quite a bit, comes back in there um, and gets shots up. Um, so, you know, position, I don't, we kind of in offensively, I don't care what position you play. We, you know, work to a skill set defensively. You got to guard somebody. So I guess she guards the five, but offensively, we just allow her to play, you know, that are, as her skill set allows. Front row here. Thanks to radio. I uh, asked Jayla this earlier. Uh, you know, you're about to play in a sold out arena. And I think it's like 15 and a half thousand. Um, you know, is that, how do you prepare a team? to walk into that kind of environment. Is there an arena in the Big 12 that you've played this year that's kind of helped you prepare for that? Or how do you go about that? Well, we, no, we, well, yes and no. We have not played in front of 15,000, so that will be new. It will be loud. Um, we understand that. We have played in some loud venues. Um, you know, I don't know, maybe when you get to a certain point, when you're at 6,000, 7,000, it's loud and you can't hear anyway. So if it's 15 and it's loud, you're still not going to be able to hear. So, you know, you work th through some of your nonverbal cues um, with your team, you know, things that you don't have to vocalize that you can do with hand signs and things like that. So, you know, we'll talk through that um, a little bit to make sure we're prepared, um, you know, and, and then hopefully somehow we can attempt to take the crowd out of it in some capacity. Um, you know, defend and hopefully they're not making shots and, you know, doing as best, you know, as best of a job that we can to just try to, to somewhat limit the noise. But, um, you know, that's going to be hard to do and, and it will be rocking. I mean, there's no doubt. But, man, what, what a great experience. What a, if you're a competitor, like this is what you live for, you know. If our team, I think they'll be super excited for this. And just what, I mean, just what a great atmosphere. I mean, this is as good as it gets right now in, in women's basketball and any basketball. And obviously, as we've said, it's the last game for, for the senior group that's just had a phenomenal career. And I don't know what it was exactly like when they got here, but I don't think it was like what it is right now, if that's fair to say. And um, man, that's, that's pretty special in women's basketball to see what they've done. And, you know, I was telling our staff yesterday when I was at that Holy Cross game, like sitting down there, I was like, man, I would love to have one of these in Morgantown at some point. Like this would be pretty, pretty special for us in our program to get something like this going. Um, and, I, and I think we can, um, but certainly they've done a phenomenal job here. 
Got time for one or two more. We'll go right here to the front. So, you know, obviously in your first year with West Virginia, first time in a Power Five uh, conference, could you have imagined a year ago that you would be in this situation, you know, getting ready to, obviously it'll be all eyes on wherever Iowa goes in the tournament. So could you have imagined a year ago that you'd be here in this situation in the NCAA tournament? Uh, I mean, yes and no. No, I, I never allowed myself, I guess, to like go this far or think that this moment and we'd be right here in Iowa City and, and all, everything that's gone with it and, and Caitlin announcing that she's, you know, going pro and so this will be it for her. So no, that piece, absolutely not. Did I have a vision that my program could get to the postseason? Sure. Um, do I think we could win a game? Yeah, probably. Um, you know, maybe not this quickly but uh, sure hope that it could happen. Uh, but yeah, again, this, I think it's special. At the same time, our season is on the line and there's a lot that comes with that, but understand where we are and who we're playing against and the environment that's, that they've created here is, man, that's special. And that's a really, really cool thing for our kids. It'll be an experience and a, and a memory they have the rest of their lives. Do one more question here in the front. Yeah, Coach, if I could just ask you sort of a big picture question in terms of your first season in the Big 12, um, travel is, not, it, it's hard for West Virginia. It has been since they, they joined, being an East Coast school, I guess now. UCF is a fellow East Coast school. Mm -hmm. But next year, you're going to have the Four Corner schools come in. I'm just wondering what your thoughts were on being part of the conference, and how do you think the conference going forward is is going to continue to be one of the you know one top conferences in the women's game? Yeah, no, it, I, I loved every second of it. You're talking to a guy, though, that came from the WAC and Nacado in Nacogdoches, Texas, and we were on a commercial flight. So we had to drive two and a half hours to Houston or Dallas and get on a commercial flight and fly to Seattle and then play and then play an afternoon on Thursday night, play an afternoon in Riverside, California, or vice versa, and then take the red eye home, you know, after you get home and you get back Sunday at 9 a.m., you know. So Big 12 tra travel from Morgantown wasn't wasn't so bad, um, you know, relative to other schools in our league though, yes. And I know that's the question you were asking is yes, we are a geographical outlier, um, you know, with a few other schools, um, but man, it, it was fun. I think it prepares you. Um, I had played several of those schools and those venues. So from a coaching standpoint, I thought we, you know, we would be okay, um, you know, and, and watched plenty of the big 12 cause that was kind of my footprint. Um, in Texas. But um, yeah, no, so I thought it prepared us. Um, I think it will be equally as good when these, the four corners, as you said, schools come in. Those are some great women's basketball powers right now. Um, big 12 went 7-0, and I think, in the first round I saw. Um, so big time props to the Big 12 and what they did um, those first two days in the, in the NCAA tournament. Uh, so yeah, so it's a, it's a gauntlet. And I think what helps you is there's so many different styles in the Big 12. And, and so we've had so many different types of game plans. When you get on some of these shorter notices, maybe we can at least go back and recall something that, you know, we've already talked about or a team we've already played against because the styles are so different. You get size and post play at some places. You get speed and quickness at others. You get athleticism with some schools. So really, I feel like we faced a lot of different types of teams um, that prepare you for these opportunities. All right. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Our next uh, press conference will be at 2.15 with Iowa players. All right.